Um, buddy. How are you doing? Last Outrider here with another Necron formation for you. I hope people, if you've watched all of these videos, are going to start to see that the Necrons are very versatile now. In fact, formations are almost mandated for them. It's amazing what they could do. This one we're going to bring you today is called The Living Tomb. Ghostly lights and spectral arcs of energy herald the arrival from a Necron invasion force. Their foes look on in confusion, little knowing the terror about to be unleashed. Then, with an ear-splitting shriek, reality is torn asunder and a massive obelisk flanked by monoliths materializes in a storm of crackling energy. This is the living tomb. A nexus from which the legions will march forth to conquer the planet. Enemies with the misfortune to be in the shadow of the living tomb when it arrives will be lashed with gauss fire. Their very bodies scattered like embers from a dying fire. Moments later, eternity gates flicker to terrible life, and the first skeletal shadows take shape within. Within minutes, the living tomb will be surrounded by the first legions of the Necrons, and will have a foothold upon the world. Scary stuff, huh? You think that's scary? Wait until you find out what a living tomb is. It consists of one obelisk and an optional zero to two monoliths. That's it. So only the obelisk is required. Which means basically, and this is the insane part, since this is a formation, it is a separate detachment. An entirely separate detachment from your main detachment. You can have as many as them as you want without taking up a single space on your force allocation chart. So just buy as many obelisks and monoliths as you want. Period. Is what they're saying. Yes, that's freaking terrifying. But it gets worse because... Now, you, when you buy this obelisk, it's going to have the following special rules. If you don't put it in your force allocation chart, it automatically becomes these special rules. One, precision arrival. All units in this formation must be placed into deep strike reserve. Do not make reserve rolls for the obelisk from this formation. It automatically arrives on the controlling player's second turn. <laughs> yes, I, you heard correctly. When arriving from Deep Strike Reserve, monoliths from this formation do not scatter. They are placed within 12 inches of the obelisk from this formation. Can you see how that works? So I guess the obelisk automatically arrives on turn two. No need to roll. In addition, the two monoliths, if you bought them, that accompany it, automatically arrive anywhere you want within 12 inches of the obelisk. Period. And if you think that's not good enough, you also get Tomb Nexus. Immediately after a monolith from this formation arrives from the Deep Strike Reserve, you can choose one friendly unit with the Necron faction, consisting entirely of models with either the infantry or jump infantry unit type <laughs> that is in reserves or ongoing reserves. The unit, the chosen unit, is placed as if they were disembarking from the monolith's eternity gate. 
Any models that cannot be placed are removed as casualties. But the unit is otherwise treated exactly as if it were disembarking from a transport vehicle. Now, this is where you should go back and watch the video called Reclamation Legion. <laughs> because that's another formation which basically gives the warriors and immortals there uh, relentless and move through cover. So combining that with a living tomb and tomb nexus, they can now basically disembark. You have as many monoliths and obelisks as you want. They just appear on turn two and then leave it coming from it is, uh, is, is any, any unit that they want. <laughs> Any friendly unit with Necron's faction consisting entirely of models, which are infantry or jump. It's insane. It's insane. I think finally now, eight or nine years later, Necrons will finally become the terror and threat that they were always supposed to be in 40k. I hope you Necron players are watching this. Don't even worry about what your army list is. The first thing you should be asking yourself is, what formations are you using? Until next time, bye.